What's going on everybody, Drake Boy here, back with another video. Today, we're actually working on the C5 yet again. Or should I say, I'm not working on the C5, which is kind of different. Right now, I am on my way to actually go pick up my C5, and then I'm gonna go take it to an audio stereo system to get a new, uh, what is it called, cordless Apple CarPlay screen, along with the whole trim centerpiece, because if you guys know, the centerpiece of the trim there's so many bars that go across, you'd actually have to chop them off, but instead people make a conversion for the doubled in touchscreen. I am also doing upgraded speakers as well as one 12 inch sub. And they said that they have some options for me to go through when I get over there. So right now I'm on my way to go get my car and then I'm gonna head to their shop. I'm actually pretty excited because I've been listening to radio and it's been static most of the time. And it's just super annoying that I don't have like my maps on my screen or anything else. I have to keep looking down on my phone for maps or whatever else. And I can't listen to my bangers, man. Right now, comment down below, who's your favorite artist that you're stuck on right now? For me, it's The Weeknd and Pistol Pluma. Two completely different people, but The Weeknd's on top, bro. I, I gotta give him that. I've been stuck on that full since like November of last year. I went to one of his concerts and it just put me on. And then of course, Pistol Pluma. I don't even speak Spanish, but that's just, just a vibe. Let's go get the C5 and I'll get you guys an update when we're there. Oh, also real quick, depending how rattly the car is with the base, I'm thinking about pulling all the door trim and all the buttons and everything else and putting like a rubber aligner in between them all. That way we don't have any rattles and shit like that. I'm also pretty excited because I have the window trim and everything else that you guys seen me install the other day. And I also got the last pieces of the trim in and i believe that's them right back here i don't know yet i haven't opened up the box but as long as we have all the other trim it should be like a brand new car and super high quality and so i can hear my music and not hear the wind noise outside right now without the main trim that i needed that i was missing it's already way quieter into the cob cob so i can only imagine what it's going to be like with all new trim bro i don't i don't even know what it's going to be like probably like my scat we are now at the shop the car is absolutely filthy, but I just got it tinted as well. So it was gone for about a day. And then here we are now gonna drop it off again to get some stereo system put in it. Let's get you guys a little cold start. Sheesh. Even dirty, it still looks good. I also have the Corvette letters to go inside right there, which I might throw in today when I get it back. But look at how dirty it is. Maybe camera doesn't do it justice. I just gotta lock up my shop now and then go drop it off and I'll be back over here too. Lucky for me, today's not the busiest day. So it gives me time to actually work on the vet a little bit. I'm thinking once I even get back, I'm gonna also install some of the interior trim pieces that were broken or missing or whatever. So we'll get that taken care of at the same time as doing all the trim. Damn, the tin shop left my dash all dirty. I've also been waiting for my new shift knob to come in. I've been stuck with that crap. Look at how dark the tent is though. Maybe it doesn't look dark on camera, it's ceramic. I got 5% in the rear and then 20% on my windows. Um, also, this car is so incredibly low that I have, to, I have to actually back out of driveways, which I'll show you right now, just to get by with not scraping. Because if pulling out forward, it's just not an option. Look. <laughs> so yeah, I literally have to back it out. Like we're doing right now. Max angle. Oh, we're chilling, we're chilling. All right. Let's get on the road. Bro, I am so bad at giving updates. I literally dropped it off here at Stereo City. If you guys are interested in getting a sound system put in, come down to Stereo City in Ontario, California. They do badass work. Let me show you real quick. Actually, like I was saying, I had dropped off the car, went back to my shop, worked on all the cars for the day, and then I came back here to pick it up, and now here we are. I'm gonna actually wait till I get back to my shop to show you guys, but as you can see already, we got a reverse camera. That's gonna be nice for when I get my lower diffuser put on, so I can see, I don't make sure I, don't, I, make sure I don't hit the curbs. Okay, I just got in the car, and like I said, I fucking, I got here and I dropped it off, and my girl gave me a ride back to the shop, to my shop, and then I got a ride here from the homie, and I just completely forgot to give an update on what's going on, what I'm doing, but I'm obviously here in the vet right now, I picked it up, I'm gonna head back to my shop right now, and then I'll show you everything, 
camera is dope the sound system is dope they showed me how to adjust my settings a little bit so i'm excited i got carplay and it's cordless so i could just connect my phone it connects on its own and i got carplay and i'm chilling so right now let's head back to the shop and i'll follow you guys up okay so here we are back at the shop i'm gonna start from the back and move my way forward so obviously we have the big kicker it's two 12 inch subs on this guy and it's flipped upside down that way i can still put stuff on top just like my target top because the target top is supposed to sit right here but now i don't have to sacrifice not be able to pull that off because that is able to sit upside down that's the stock head unit as you can see up there you got the touch screen versus this old clapped out junk where half the buttons didn't even work moving our way forward you can't see inside of here but we did upgraded speakers i did all the tweeters we have two amps controlling the sub itself i'm sorry one amp so here's our big amp right here don't worry about all this crap it's all gonna get thrown away everybody's been complaining like bro your inside of your car is so fucking dirty what's up with that it's because i literally don't care like if it gets dirty so what this car is meant to be used and shit i go out to the race that night i get my snacks my bevs my seeds and i throw them in the car when i'm done and that's it and then here let's hop inside so obviously here we have our big apple uh, sorry cordless apple carplay touchscreen it's a doubled in and they even had this uh centerpiece here that way they don't have to chop everything and it looks oem it's also not plastic it's like a i'm sure it's plastic but it's got like a nice rubber coating on the outside so it doesn't feel all cheap and flimsy like oem shit like there's that yeah you kind of hear my keys and shit but here listen sounds solid right not solid right here you're just gonna hear my keys flopping around i'd like to say my shift knob even came in too so i have to look at my box and see if that's what it is but we also have the weather, the weather stripping here which i might finish up tomorrow i'd love to give you guys a sound clip but i don't want to get copywritten so i'm just gonna tell you guys that it's really good i'll tell you that okay he was trying to show me how to use the equalizer and stuff that shit doesn't make sense to me that shit that i have to figure out but let's try and figure out more bass because the bass is a little bit low right now i need some more and of course i also know that i have to let it break in i remember when i had my ecoboost mustang i got a sound system put in the first day i had it i had bass max the fuck out and i blew out the sub so i called the guy and they were like oh sorry i meant to tell you there is like a two-day break-in process to let the you know whatever break in however that shit works so he gave me the new one i let it break in and then it lasted me 11 months no issues so i know i go into settings i go to equalizer enter and there's this whole chart i don't know what this shit means i don't know what like how the fuck to use it i'm gonna go through them and see which one is my base setting and i'm gonna turn it up a little bit okay so i figured out the base i think it's the sw level i turn it up and i heard the base going up and stuff so i think that's it because when i had it at 10 it was vibrating everything turn it back down to three and it's a perfect amount for me i'm not crazy about the base but when i need it it's there which is dope that's why i got two 12s and then um just for my regular use i'm just gonna have it at three for now and if i want to be lit and listen to some fucking the weekend i'm gonna turn that bitch up also check this out i'm gonna turn off the car and when i go and pop the hood on my brand new reservoir the cap fucking leaks i bet you we catch it right now boom there it is you see it look at this shit brand new and this is all the way tight for those wondering and it just fucking pisses it out bro i don't understand this shit's brand new and i never had that issue with the stock one this is the uh, reservoir and cap that I got off eBay. Yes, I know it's off eBay, but regardless, it shouldn't be doing that shit. And then it leaves a whole puddle underneath the car. Luckily, it doesn't fucking spray on the wrap or get under here, but I'm gonna have to do something about this. That shit, that shit ain't right. I know I said I was gonna do the trim tomorrow, but I might do it right now. It's just my problem is that it's getting dark out here soon. And I wanna be able to film this stuff in the daylight. So I might just postpone the rest of this till tomorrow. So I can show you guys in the clear daylight. Only problem with that is this is gonna be fucking hot, like 104 degrees. And yes, I know, I live in Arizona, I live in Texas, it's 115, I don't give a fuck. Anything above 100 is smoking hot. But like, look, now it stopped pissing it out. And here's my little snail trail. I turned it off for maybe two minutes and this is everything that comes out. Super fucking annoying. For my own sake, I wanna say fuck it and just do the weather stripping just because I know I could do it right here in the dark. But I do want to show you guys, so I am going to actually hold off till tomorrow, but for you guys, it's five seconds uh, to do all the weather stripping. That way you guys have it like clear as day, you know, and I want to get a good thumbnail for the car. And I guess this lighting is a good thumbnail, but I don't even know what to do for the thumbnail. Like, do I use my hand in front of the fucking screen? I don't know. I'm going to do this whole YouTube shit. One thing that I do have to do is on the driver's side door, I'll show you. 
the weather strip the new one is so big and bulky here that it kind of catches here and rolls back a little bit so i use the stuff the, the stuff i use the stuff called slide glide put it here on the door jam just a little bit and a little bit here and it slips right past i was hoping the sun was going to help bake it into place but it didn't unfortunately so um i also don't want to cut and trim it at all so we're just gonna have to use some slide glide and it'll be no problems but for the trim that I got, it's this piece here that goes all the way across to the other side. I got both pillars here for the togger top. And I got the one for the front windshield, which goes here all the way across and down the other side. So it's all new trim, which makes me really excited because that's the last piece of the trim puzzle. Somebody also commented, Drake cares more about his weather trim than he does his power. Did you guys not see? I got my heads cam and my high ram ordered. Also, my heads are here. My cam is here. And my cam actually just came in today and my high rem is here so i almost have everything i think in order to install my heads cam setup i also have my head gaskets and a few other things that i knew that i would need the water pump gaskets i'm gonna get brand new oem water sorry uh exhaust manifold gaskets i have a new arp crank bolt i've got a front main seal brand new oh i know what i need i still need a clutch i'm thinking about getting with the mcleod rst or some shit like i don't know I have options. The McLeod RST is proven on the Mustangs. I've installed a bunch of those before, and I really like the clutch. I like where they drive because it drives actually softer than stock, but I wouldn't mind a little heavy clutch in there because I know that shit's gonna bite and grab. Regardless, the stock clutch is not gonna handle that power that it's gonna make with the heads cam. 500 wheel all on its own. Uh, there's no way that, that clutch is taking it. That might be the original clutch that came in the car with 170,000 miles, so it has to be replaced regardless. Right now I'm looking for my slide glide and I can't find it anywhere. Oh, I just found it. I got a little bit on my pinky and I'll show you what I do. Every time I get the car detailed, they always wipe the door jams, but I have to put some of this back. Oh, I'm not even recording it. I have to put some of this back and honestly I put too much, but I can always wipe it off with a rag. The cars that are gonna get detailed tomorrow anyway. As you guys are watching this, I might be getting it detailed Actually, I take it back because I'm not doing filming this, film, this filming this video. Jesus Christ. There we go. Just like that. So now when I close the door. Oh, it's still so big and bulky. That's what she said. Let me spread it out a little bit more. Okay, I spread it. Damn, that shit's still so big and bulky, bro. It catches. Actually, I feel it sliding past. There we go. I don't know, bro. At least it's not going to roll back. It's slipping and sliding on that slide glide fucking coolant leak bro that shit pisses me off it's such a waste of money for coolant too all right y'all it's a few days later i'm not gonna lie it's about four days later i've been driving the vet for the last like two days or whatever and it's been working great the sound system is nuts let's pop this try to let it cool for just a minute i just pulled it in look at this i did a pull what the hell to be fair i said i was gonna do some velcro on here this way I can move it around if I need to. So it just kind of chills right there. If I just do some Velcro, it'll be fine. Stick to the carpet. That way, if I have to move it, I can. But it is a few days later. So today my plan is to do the rest of the trim like I said I was going to do. We're going to get started by pulling off my carbon fiber roof. Just kidding, it is wrap. Pulling off the roof, doing these two right here. And then we'll do the one and the one. Also, my coolant leak is still happening. And it's from the reservoir cap itself. So I ordered a whole new reservoir and a cap. Let me show you what I think is going on. Pop this fat doink. So what I think is happening is typically on a reservoir, it's a little bit raised and there's a lip on there with the hose that comes out of the side and it goes to the bottom. And that's supposed to vent pressure. Well, this doesn't have it. So I think it has so much pressure built up. It just spews all my coolant. And it already did it, which is spewed pretty much the whole, the whole tank. And that's almost a gallon in here. So I ordered a different reservoir. This one was off of eBay. It was $150, by the way, and it doesn't work well. So I ordered a different one from a different site and it's legit and it has a little breather. So I think we should be good with that. I also made a huge purchase for this car. Not my heads cam setup. I already have that. I already see, I also already have my uh, Harley high ram. I've got my injectors. I've got my throttle body. I've got everything to go heads cam high ram. Besides the clutch, I still need that. And of course the tune. But I ordered another, another pretty big power. Actually, no, fuck, what the hell? It's not a power adder. It's something exterior related. You'll see, I'm gonna keep it a surprise. I'm gonna do like a little grand reveal for that. But it should be getting here in a few days to my house. So I look forward to that. 
And it's something that I personally am not gonna install because there's some things I leave to the professionals. And so I'm not gonna install whatever this is I'm talking about. So I'm gonna have somebody else do it and you'll see what it is. With the roof off, I wanna show you how bad this trim is. You can see here, it's peeled back and it's extremely dry rotted, literally super brittle, falls apart. And then here on the corners, it's completely missing chunks. And so all the wind noise comes right here and it gets by the window right here where the window goes up and touches it. Same here on this side, completely missing this chunk. And then I even had sliced off the top half of it just for the guy who was wrapping it so we could tuck it down farther. And so um, it looks like it's pretty simple. Some Phillips heads, maybe some Torx bits. This front one, let me show you how this one mounts. I'm actually gonna show you on this door. And would you look at that? I'm fucking missing this cap, what the hell? Anywho, real quick, this one should be held in by some push tabs. Looks like I'm missing one there. I have one there and then it should pull off, hopefully that easy. But first, we're gonna do these. Looks like Phillips heads and they should come off real easy. I've got the two Phillips head screws pulled out, but I think these are double side sticky tape because I'm looking at my new ones and sure enough, they have double side sticky tape on there. So I'm just gonna get a little flat head, kind of lift up on it and pull it till these are fully out. But also I wanna point out, it is 100 degrees and 42% humidity and super smoky from a fire that's local. And so I am sweating like crazy right now. And there's not a single breeze going through the shop. So I'm like dripping sweat right now. And check it out, this roof doubles as a work table. I'm like what the fuck that's good you can see where they put the sticky tape in here here and then this is also a little bit sticky i don't know if it's tape or glue or anything i think it was just from it being there for so long but i gotta just cane off all the rest of this residue but first i'm gonna take a shit and then i'll get back to this and then i'll throw on the new one okay now that i'm done shitting up a fucking storm let's get back to work i left off that i need to clean off this stuff but in the meantime i'm also gonna pull off that side just so i can clean them both at one time Look what the boys came and got me. What? And no, I don't drink my monster with this beer salt. I'm gonna show you what I use this beer salt for. So you get your lime hot Cheetos and you sprinkle some of that beer salt in here. Next level, I promise you, you could even throw them in the fridge for a little bit. It hits different, I'm telling you, just do it. There it is, new trim is in. I clean it with alcohol, but the double sided sticky tape that a kit comes with is really not the best. I can tell it's not gonna really stick, but I think maybe with the hood, I'm oh, sorry, the roof on, and it's gonna be smushed down with the heat. It might adhere, because I even clean it with rubbing alcohol, but we shall see. Next up is the front and rear trim across the top. Probably gonna start with the back. This one's already missing its tabs, and so I just have to rip it. But that means that I need new tabs, which kind of sucks, because I don't have any, and they're not very, like, universal. But look at that shit. You can tell they've tried gluing it before because it doesn't come with all of this crap on here. I pulled off the trim, which was absolutely disgusting, and look what's left behind. Literal, like, chunks or tar, something all over inside of here. This is a big piece right here. There's a bunch in here, so I have to scrape all this out. It almost looks like someone tried gluing this shit down. Here's the trim here and almost three pieces. Same goes for this side. All this crap, I have to scrape off. All this, gotta scrape out. Look at it, chiseling off in chunks. So, I gotta start, start getting scraping and then uh, throw on this new piece. What the hell? Okay, so I got the new trim in. I guess it does have this missing. I thought mine was just like torn apart or whatever, but I guess this is normal. This screw lined up, that one there. This one didn't, and you can't really flex it much because this is a metal bracket here. So when I had them both like smushed and both kind of in, it was kinked this way. So I put in this one and I drilled my own hole for this one here. So now it sits pretty much as flush as I could get it. The rest is perfect. Only on this corner, it's kind of up a little bit, but I think when the roof is on, it'll smush it down the rest of the way. Now we have to move on to this one and remove the plastic tip, tips, tabs, tabs, geez, what the, f plastic clips, and then pull it all out, probably scrape away some shit, cause I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to, and then throw on the new one. Okay, so I got the trim off. This piece was actually kind of confusing, just a little bit. So obviously I knew that there was the little tabs here Little plastic tabs was one and two. I was already missing one else thing for right there. But then I pulled it up to here and then I'm trying to pull on it and I was like, okay, there's a screw somewhere. 
So I pulled down this pillar and I found the screw. So now I'm trying to lift up and I'm like, okay, there's a screw somewhere else. I found the screw here on the, in between like right there is where it goes. And then I'm getting farther, I'm trying to pull. I'm like, okay, so there's screws where else? So I look in the bottom of this and I see like, oh, okay, this is its own metal bracket. And so you lift up on the trim and between the trim and metal bracket is the screws. So there was one, two, three underneath the trim, but above the metal bracket. So that was a little tricky part. Let's get started on laying this piece. Check it out. We got it on and it was honestly a pain in the ass. And I'm honestly very upset with the way it fits. If you look here, there's a gap between the trim and the window. And there's nothing I could do about it because the bottom bracket is all metal. And it doesn't even sit flush up against, you see the gap between the pillar here and this bracket? And it's only on the corners. So the corners fit like shit. The center's fine, but the corners fit like shit. And I low-key feel like that's gonna cause more wind noise than I had before. I had even pulled it back off, scraped it nice and clean, and it didn't change anything at all. And then these were, I guess these weren't that bad, but the bottom corners, bro, the push tabs are kind of a dick to get in. Coming on this side, the, this bottom corner fit like dog shit. It actually would droop down a little bit, but when I closed the door, it sucked it back up. So this side's fine. This side doesn't fit as bad as the other side, but like it's still lifted up on the corner and uh, it doesn't make me very happy. You could see how it's lifted above the bracket there. See that gap, it's about a, it's almost, a, let's say about a quarter inch. But it's all on, so I think I'm gonna test fit the roof and see how it fits on the new trim. Okay, I've never struggled ever putting on this roof, and I do this all on my own easily, like in two seconds. It was a bitch and a half to get it on. So the trim back here, where I had to drill my own hole, like look at how shitty that looks. Massive hump, the other one didn't do that. And it's flush across the back, which is nice. But on the front where I was struggling, I would go to latch it down, and the fucking roof is lifting, and you could hear it wanting to crack. And so since this trim isn't molded right, the metal piece, this part is so far back that the roof was getting stuck here where this line is. And so then it wanted to lift up. So I had to literally pry this. I had to like go like this and pry this way to push this back and push the roof back and then latch at the same time just to smush it down and in. And then these corners are just massive since they don't fit down flat how they should. These corners look like shit. I mean, now the trim goes all the way forward now that the roof is forcing it forward, but it looks like crap. And then these corners, I had to try my best to try and smush it up, but bro, it just, like the gap is, is <laughs> ridiculous. And like, it, this doesn't line up at all. It's too much material in this corner. It looks like shit. I tried massaging the trim as best as I could, try to fit it better. But the problem here is there's too much material coming out this way. And even if I try to smush it back up and in, it just keeps coming right back out. And I can't move it because there's screws in the trim itself on the middle bracket. So there's no wiggle room in it, it's just a little hole. So I think with the windows up, it'll help smush it into place. And then with the heat and everything, it's gonna help rest better. But I'm very, very disappointed. I'm not even gonna lie. You would think spending $1,000 for just the trim that I did right here, it would fit perfect, $1,000. I'm pretty sure had I gotten like OEM, if they even made it, it wouldn't even be a thousand bucks. They only charge a thousand dollars because you can't get that shit from Chevy anymore. You can only get it from them. But yeah, I'm like extremely disappointed, but it is what it is. I'm really hoping like, like look at this one. This one fits much better compared to the other side, but it's still like jank as fuck. Like this, I feel like should be flush against this trim here and it's not. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is take it on a test drive and I'll show you guys in cab what the sound sounds like now because the wind noise before was atrocious. I'm really hoping now it's better. So let's go for a little test drive. And these were actually the last trim pieces that I needed for all of the trim inside the car to be replaced. So I'm really hoping this resolves my issue. That way it's like a new car again. Let's hit you guys with a somewhat of a cold start. It's basically warm. Let's see if the windows even go up normal. Let's see. Okay, they do. And I see a massive gap right there. Literally a massive gap. Let me see if you guys can see it. You see that? Oh my God. Let's fucking hop out. Atrocious, bro. Literally a huge gap right there. The rest is fine, like I think. Oh my God, that is so fucking annoying. 
and it's like right here at the lip too so air's get definitely gonna get caught inside oh that's so annoying maybe if i massage it a little bit not only is air gonna get inside water's gonna get inside and back here it really doesn't look too great but i'm gonna have to look at it from the inside so i can see if there's light going through let's go around to this side bro i hope to god that's not a huge ass gap like look at this bro what the fuck even here in this corner, it looks like shit. I'm inside the car. Oh, actually, it does look sealed. Maybe, just barely. But back there, I see light. Oh my God. That's literally a massive gap. And the only thing that's kind of sealing it is this tiny itty bitty lip, which means when they wash it with a pressure washer, dude, water's gonna get in. <sighs> if anybody could find OEM, I'm talking Chevy trim, bro. Send me a link, whatever you could do. If you have some OEM brand new in package, I want to buy it, bro. This is dog shit. I'm, I'm so disappointed. Literally $1,000 in trim that doesn't even fit right. For shits and giggles, you might as well go on that test drive. I'm, I'm actually pissed. That kind of ruins my day just because... It's $1,000, and even though maybe $1,000 doesn't mean much to you guys, bro, $1,000 is a lot of fucking money. So, yeah, I'm not loaded. $1,000 hurts my pocket. Well, let's go on our test drive. At least I have a working backup camera. I'm really hoping that maybe with heat, everything kind of breaks in nice. Just like my door jams, uh, that trim with heat did break in very nice. Same with the trunk, but I don't know, bro. I'm so disappointed. And I actually did realize that once I had closed my door all the way on the driver's side, it sealed a little bit better. I guess I didn't have it all the way closed because now with the new trim, it is a little bit more difficult to close it. I'm first going to cruise out. That way I could cool down a little bit because it's hot and I'm sweaty. And then we'll roll up the windows and get a sound check. Okay, let's get our windows up. Oh, right away I hear the wind. I hear it loud and clear. Oh my God, the gap is huge. Bro, you can see the gap, it's massive. That's loud. Maybe the car's a little bit quieter than before, I'll give it that most, but still, right there, bro, you can see it loud and, it's bright, there's a huge gap, I hear the wind. I think I need to take it on the freeway so I could at least get up to like 65, 70 and get a sound check then, because right now it's only going about 45, 50. And realistically, I'm not even tripping on the air sound, I'm tripping on, if it's raining, bro, water's gonna go right through there, easy, that's a huge gap. And it goes all the way up front too, you can see. Made a quick pit stop to get some gas. At least the car still looks good. But I'm honestly so disappointed. Now if the trim was maybe like two or three hundred bucks, I wouldn't be so upset. Like fuck it, two or three hundred bucks, no big deal. But a thousand dollars, big deal. I honestly think the main problem is this front seal here since it wasn't formed right, it wasn't molded right. It's creating a bunch of binding and force with this smushing this forward and down that's creating this big bow. You could see the big lump in here. I'm gonna try to put a lot of heat to it with a heat gun and mold this into shape a little bit better, but no promises. And then the back here, there's no excuse for this to be this way. I have it all clipped in and everything the way it's supposed to, and uh, it just fits so bad. I guess lucky for me, I drive with the windows down pretty much every time. So I already deal with all the wind noise and I don't really care. It's just the biggest disappointment is when they go to wash the car, it's gonna get water all up inside my car and there's gonna be no way around that. Let's get up to like 65 or 70 and do a little wind check. Yeah, it is way louder than it was before. Way louder. Like I actually have to speak up in order to hold a conversation. The fucking old raunchy trim was better than this new shit. Again, if you guys know where I could buy OEM Chevy trim, the three pieces that I just bought, the fucking windows or the, the top pieces for the target top, the front window seal and the back window seal, hit me up, send me a link on Instagram, Drake built on Instagram, cause I, I just don't want to deal with this shit, honestly. I'd rather have it like perfectly fit. Like everything else here works perfectly. Besides the headers, fuck the headers. But please, if you have any idea where I could get OEM shit, let me know. On a better note, I've been letting the car sit for a little bit. Um, my shift knob just came in. 
I got a carbon fiber weighted shift knob with the red ring on the bottom. Just give it a little pizzazz. So we're gonna put this in. I see we have some sleeves here. I can't tell if the diameters are any different. I think they are. Yes, they are. So I'll have to see which one fits mine. This goes over, has a locking or a set screw, and that's it. Okay. Oh, y'all see that? You guys see that right there? I can see your reflection in the fucking screen. Take off this old one. This going straight in the trash. Then you have your new one here. You took off the red collar. It has three set screws. And of course, here is the little spline in the center. So we just have to keep the set screws on the side of it, like so. But I want the threads to be straight. So it's gonna face this way, like this. That way the weave is straight. Set screws aren't gonna set or sit in that center piece. But first we have to slide this guy on, like so. We're not using any of these inserts. Drop this down. Tighten up the set screws. However I want it to position, screw this thing back up and the boot's done. And just like that, she's installed. Threads, oh sorry, the fucking weave is straight. The boot, I'm trying to like massage it up a little bit, but it's not really pinching itself into place. It's no biggie. You can't even really see it from my point of view. But now I don't have a wobbly shift knob. Where's my little piece of crap? Where'd that go? There we are. No more wobbly jank ass shift knob. Super solid. Only downside to it being this kind of material, carbon fiber of course, but like gloss and solid is in the heat, it gets super hot and then you have to use a rag to kind of cool it down at first when you're first shifting, but we're good. Well, that is going to conclude today's video. Uh, sorry, it was a little bit of a letdown for the trim. As far as it being a letdown for you, it's a letdown for me as well. But at least we got the sound system taken care of. We got a shift knob, so the interior is finally a little bit decent. That's gonna do it for today. So if you guys enjoyed, please like, subscribe, comment down below what you would like to see on this car. And again, I have another big secret for this car that's coming very soon, so stay tuned. I'll catch you on the next one. Deuces.